Diamond Head. This is Ole Electric's new electric motorcycle. It's very bold. It's very futuristic. It's quite impressive. I am looking forward to seeing these on the roads because I think they're definitely going to turn heads. And it kind of reminds me of Tron, a little bit of Tesla's Cybertruck mixed in there too. And it's actually one of four electric motorcycles that they're planning on selling in the future. So this first one, of course, like I said, is Diamond Head. That's what they're calling it. Then there is the Cruiser. There's also the Roadster. And then there's the Adventure not adventurer, just adventure. Now, we don't have any information on these vehicles in terms of price, in terms of specs. There's really nothing except the visuals, and these are, of course, 3D renders, but they've also showed off physical prototype versions of these bikes at their recent Customer Day 2023. So check this out. The Diamond Head. You like it? It will truly define what super sports biking is across the world. And the future of motorcycling will be built here in India by us Indians here in India for the whole of the world. Now, back in 2022, in a blog post, Bhavish Agarwal had said that Olai Electric's premium electric motorcycle offering would be for sale at the end of 2023. However, now that they've unveiled these four offerings, it looks like that's getting pushed all the way until the end of 2024. Now, apart from these four bikes, Olai Electric has also announced an upgrade to their S1 lineup, and things are starting to get a little bit complicated in terms of the number of models and variations of different models. But to keep it simple, basically, there's the Pro, the Air, and now the X. And then, and also, at the same time, they kind of announced everything all at once. They're also upgrading their scooter operating system. So this is called Move OS, and this is the third iteration of this operating system for their S1 scooters. And it's been a pretty bumpy journey to get to this point, but it seems like now they're really ironing out a lot of the issues, a lot of the bugs and glitches that had initially plagued this operating system. Now, one interesting thing, kind of an Easter egg with regards to the live stream website where Ola Electric hosted their Customer Day 2023 event was that the website itself was called olasilicon.com. So my interpretation of this is that it's actually a hint at something that Bhavish Agarwal has been building for some time now, which is a company that's actually foraying into the AI and silicon space. Speaking to your story recently, Bhavish talked about Krutrim Side Designs Private Limited, which is his latest company, and it's going to be building out Olai Electric's AI and silicon capacity so that the company can build custom AI-based solutions for things like autonomous driving, which of course requires very custom hardware and AI to handle Indian roads. So they're looking at using AI to solve problems like, for example, providing real-time traffic updates, which is still something to this day in India that Google Maps struggles with. Also, they're going to be using this tech to map out roadblocks, road closures, and detours. And Ola Electric is actually currently using their own mapping solutions for their scooters, not using Google Maps. So this mapping tech came to them from a company that they acquired, Geospock. And the latest news about this new company, Krutrim Side Designs, is that they're gonna be raising between 50 and $100 million, and $15 million of this has already been committed by Matrix Partners India. Now, continuing on this topic of EVs, Swiggy has signed an EV partnership with Taiwanese EV company, Gogoro. So Gogoro is known for its heavy focus on battery swapping, and towards the end of 2022, they actually entered into the Indian market for the first time through a partnership with Zip Electric. Now, though, they're expanding the scope of their presence in India with the Swiggy partnership, which will enable Swiggy to achieve their goal of doing 8 lakh kilometers of deliveries every single day purely with EVs, and they made that promise back in 2021. All right, next up, things are going from bad to worse to really terrible for India's gaming industry right now, so there's a bit of an update when it comes to GST because it seems like a lot of India's gaming companies haven't been paying GST properly. So the Central Central Board of Direct Taxes and Customs has actually taken a look at pending GST liabilities of gambling companies and gaming companies, basically games of chance and also games of skill from 2017 until today. And it looks like there's more than 50,000 crore rupees that have been owed by Indian companies over this time span. So the Directorate General of GST Intelligence is now sending out notices to all of these companies that are owing money because India's gaming industry has only paid about 5,000 of that 50,000 crore rupees rupees in GST since 2017, which means that about 45,000 crore rupees is still pending. This only appears to be tangentially related to the 28% GST that is now being applied to gambling gaming companies here in India this year in 2023. So it seems like CBIC is just taking this opportunity while all of the focus is on this industry to say, hey, these are some companies that actually haven't paid their taxes and now we're going to come and collect. Now, interestingly, about 12,000 crore rupees of this 45,000 crore rupees 
that's being owed right now is actually from offshore gaming companies. So think Dubai, think Singapore, Delaware, Tax Haven Islands, those kinds of places. And then 21,000 crore rupees is actually owed by one single company, Gamescraft. That is an astonishing number for one company to be owing almost half of this 45,000 crore rupees just from one company. These guys are based in Bengaluru. And I actually interviewed Prithvi Singh, who's one of the founders of this company back in 2019. If you want to check that podcast out, I wouldn't recommend it. The comment section is kind of a war zone, to be honest, where it's a mix of bots and probably company employees saying how amazing Gamescraft is, trying to boost the company's reputation in the comment section. And then the other half is genuine customers who are just really upset about the way that they feel they've been sort of conned out of their money by this company. And, you know, it's gambling. So that's just what happens, right? The casino always wins, but people are obviously really upset. And so that's what the comment section looks like. If you want to go see it, you can check the video out up here. Now, what's interesting is that the Karnataka High Court had actually shut down the DGGI. They said that the tax demand raised against Gamescraft was actually not correct, but a special leave petition in the Supreme Court in August of this year, 2022, appealed that decision. And so it's very possible that Gamescraft is going to have to end up paying up if they can, if they possibly, I, I truly don't know if that's even possible for them, if they're rolling in the cash or if they're having a hard time right now with this 28% GST that's also happening at the same time, but time will tell. We'll keep you guys updated on the story as it unfolds. All right, next up, it's very possible that this week is gonna go down in history as the worst week of FY24 when it comes to Indian startup funding because Indian startups only raised $3.95 million at the time of me filming this video, which is Thursday, the 17th of August. It's very possible that by the time you're watching this video, the count will have gone up for this week, but let's talk about some of these companies. So the leader this week was Continex. They raised $2 million in their pre-series A. They are a B2B AI speech recognition startup that provides businesses with a speech-to-text platform. Then there's Vega Pay. They raised $1.1 million in their pre-seed. They're sort of like a B2B fintech SaaS platform, providing a tech platform for banks and NBFCs. Then there's Teleport, a travel tech startup that is making getting a tourist visa easy and straight straightforward. They raised half a million dollars in their pre-seed round. And then we have Plus, a jewelry savings app. They raised $350,000 in their seed round. And then also BizPay is a fintech startup and they haven't disclosed how much they've raised. One last thing here before we go, if you're building a cool startup here in India, head over to towardsventures.com, upload a 60 second or less video from your phone explaining what you're building and we might feature you as our startup of the week. All right. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.